Hello, I'm Paul Wells. This is chapter nine of the story of Plug and Plink. Links to the previous chapters down in the description. So what I'd like to do this time is I'd like to pick up from chapter five, which was actually about the electronics. And in that chapter, I'd reached a point where a guy had produced two versions of the printed circuit board and no firmware. So I was on the lookout for a, for a new company to, um, to make a new printed circuit board and write some firmware, basically the insides of the snake. Well, I'd say something from the outset about this stage. A little bit of a digression for you. I'm a 30 year veteran of software, writing software. I started off writing C, um, then I moved on to um, writing Java in 1998. Java has been all over the place. It used to be that you would write separate applications that ran on their own, and then it sort of became the server-side language. So I've been wor working on servers. This is sort of a heavy back end of the systems for telecoms, banks, uh, content management, pharmaceuticals, whatever, whatever business. And that's where all the reports and the, the business logic is implemented. And if people ask me what's it like to work in that realm, well, there's an analogy which I like to use, which is student accommodation, any shared, young person shared accommodation. Why shouldn't shared accommodation work like any family household? Things need to be done, place needs to be kept clean, needs to be kept secure, but this never happens. It certainly never happened to me anyway. You would have your part of the fridge, but the rest of the contents of the fridge were just rotting, rancid stuff that you never went near. You took your own bog paper when you went to the bathroom. You kept your own crockery and cutlery because nobody else was cleaning up anything. A shared software project is actually something pretty similar to that. Whatever you encounter in there is unloved. Nobody's, nobody cares. Nobody does any big clean up across the whole project. Everybody just forces in their next little piece of work. And over a number of years, the project becomes unwieldy and unmanageable because it's got so many big dependencies in it. Uh, I remember working at one bank where the project I was working on, I'll swear it had every piece of technology you had ever heard of incorporated in it somewhere. So for me to specify on three or four pieces of paper, please build this device, use whatever chips you're familiar with, use whatever language you're happy with, use whatever tools you're happy with, I'm sort of jealous. I wish somebody would come to me and say, Hey, Paul, build a server. Use whatever database you find you're comfortable with. Use whatever tools you're the most happy with. It never happens. I always, I always have this gnashing of teeth trying to work in a, in a large project. Anyway, so everything's specified. Everything's ready to go. Usual sort of story, as happened, I'm looking in the UK for a company who can take this on? Well, the conversation goes nowhere. I talk to five or six different companies, don't get a call back. And this is not when they've established, oh no, this, this is one guy on his own. The conversation never went that far. One company I spoke to said, oh yes, we've, we've got a backlog of work. Um, we can look at it in three months time for you. Well, obviously that was, that was far too slow. I wasn't interested in that. Um, so I thought, okay, leave the UK, let's try going somewhere else. Um, and I found a company in Eastern Europe and they said, yeah, we can do this. Um, so I said, fine, how much money do you want? What sort of time scale? The money was reasonable. The time scale was two months. So, okay, fine, we're on. We've got a, we've got a deal. We can finally get this thing built. I checked the references and stuff, and yes, their work looked good. So, off it was kicked. And 
there was a little bit of argy-bargy about the design at the early stages. Um, I said, can you try and use the light strip from the, from the previous guy? I wanted to try and salvage something of his work anyway. Um, and they said, no, we can't use this because it's not the right type of lights. They're not stable. We can, we can use something better than that. So I said, okay. Uh, there was a bit of a discussion about the way the USB cables are connected. They wanted an, an engineering solution, but I said, no, something that plugs in the side of the snake's head isn't going to look like a, like a snake's tongue. Um, well, once we got past all of that, um, there was a bit of a delay because there's a... Um, so I knew what was going to happen. It's the usual drill. Um, the company will produce a schematic. They'll produce a picture of what the printed circuit board should look like. And then that is sent off to a Chinese company who produce it with no components on it and then send it back to the developer who then very, very carefully using um, magnifying glasses and things, carefully solders the components on. So I asked them to make four of these things so that, well, I needed two myself so that I could check the piano teaching over the internet function and I needed one for the app developer and I needed one for the product designer who was going to make 3D prints and check that the PCB would, the printed circuit board would fit inside the, the 3D model as a, just a way of verifying everything. So these things arrived, plugged them in, first one didn't work. Lights came on, but it didn't didn't respond properly. There was nothing on Bluetooth. Tried the second one. Bluetooth worked, but USB didn't work. And various bits, no one of them, no one of the four actually worked. Um, but bits of them worked. And so I thought, I can't believe this. This is, you know, once again, I'm left with some bits. I mean, it was doing more than the, the previous guy. The previous guy's product hasn't didn't do anything. At least this did look like it did something. And I didn't want to start again. Um, time had gone, money had gone. So I said, okay, guys, what about... I think the problem is in your making of it. I'm sure it's a difficult job, actually. You know, tiny, tiny components putting all this together. What about if we get, get it properly fabricated... So get a, a small number of them made, um, and then we'll have another run at it and see if we get better results. So a company was found. There's, a, there's one or two companies, not that many, but there's one or two companies that produce low-volume batches. So we're talking about... Um, we're talking about 10. The problem is, of course, if you want to make 10 of something, it's nearly as much work to set up the machine as to make 10,000 of them. So, um, anyway, that was kicked off. Uh, they said, yes, it will be six weeks. Is that right? Yeah, about a month and a half, six weeks to produce you 10 of these things. So I thought, well, okay, that's good. In six weeks' time, I'll have 10 of them. I can start field testing them, and we can check that everything's okay. Well, COVID hit. Um, that slowed down the supply chain and a Chinese holiday as well, that also slowed things down. So one, one way or another, it was about three months before these things were sent to the developer. Um, I'd also had the design reviewed by somebody in the UK and the reviewer had said, yeah, it's basically fine what they've done. Um, the only thing I'd check is uh, where you get high-powered USB chargers, fast phone chargers, things like that. Um, this thing might not work properly if you've if you've got those. If somebody plugs one of them in, so I mentioned that to to the developers, and they said, "Okay, fine. We'll modify the design slightly so that it protects itself against uh, high speed chargers." Anyway, they, the idea was they will check everything properly in their lab first and then when they've seen everything's working I ask them show me video send send me videos showing it all working 
um, and then send them over to me and then I can, I can start using them and I can, I can check everything's fine and then we can just move on. Well, eventually they arrived. Um, rather annoyingly, the, the parcel delivery company left the parcel down on the street. So I only discovered it by checking the updates on the, on the tracking on the website. Um, so I was pretty annoyed about that, to be honest. Um, plug these things in, plug the first one into my Mac charger, nothing, dead, no response at all. I tried the second, third, all 10 of them, none of them worked. Oh dear. What they'd done was, they had put protection in, but it's, I meant limit, regulate when somebody puts a high speed charger in. What they'd done is put a cutout. So yes, nothing gets damaged when you plug one in, but it doesn't work. I know that, but the customer doesn't necessarily know that. So it was a silly, silly error, silly misunderstanding. The workaround is that this version of the snake will have to be given a power supply in the box, um, and you'll have to use that. It's, a, it's a, an annoying glitch, but apart from that, everything, well, I say everything was okay. Um, I decided to give up on this company because there were just too many problems. They were supposed to have checked it in their lab, but when I tried it, I, I mean, I'll give you an example. There's one mode whereby the snake sits between the controller keyboard and the computer. And if you're, if you connect it up that way, then you can just play the sounds in the computer as normal. But what I found was if you play the piano for about 10 minutes, in that 10 minutes, maybe one note would fail to turn off and would just be left ringing. Not a big problem, but obviously a, a little, a little fault. So, uh, I decided to call it a day with them. But I decided to keep the hardware. The reason I decided to keep their hardware design was because um, one of the companies that I'd spoken to in the UK said that, well, given the lockdown, we're actually nowhere near as busy as we ought to be at this, this time. So actually, we've got a little bit of capacity and we've got time to look at your project. And so they're about two hours drive away from where I live. So I took all the pianos and the snakes and everything I got, went over to them. They're also hardware developers and they looked at the hardware and they said, yeah, this is good. I mean, you've actually chosen quite good chips. They're the best quality chips. It's not, um, you haven't skimped on quality at all, which is actually what I'd asked them to do. I didn't want low quality components because then if the project fails, I don't know whether the project's failed because of the quality or whether the project has failed because there isn't a market for it. So it just makes sense to make it the best possible quality anyway. Um, and then, then I know where I am. So the conclusion was the design of the, of the hardware is good, um, but we can help you with the firmware. And actually this is what pulled it all together. Actually being sat down next to the guy who's writing the C code that it is. Um, I learned a lot from him about what's actually going on inside the snake, the way the bootloader works, the way the um, Bluetooth authentic authentication works, all of the ins and outs. I gained a big understanding. I mean, I hadn't come into the project wanting a good understanding, but nonetheless, I was glad to have it because uh, it helped me to understand how it worked and to raise the quality of it. Um, but above all, I was able to sit next to the guy He'd produce a new version of the firmware. I would then immediately install it and try it out. And if it didn't work, then we could say, okay, can we change this? Or yes, it's working, but um, you know, we've hit a different problem. So that's how it got done. It got done by being sat in the lab next to the guy that, that did it, that, that created the firmware. So I think that sort of concludes <laughs> everything I've got to say about the, about the hardware and the firmware, it has been by far the most difficult bit of the whole project, the most troublesome part. Um, 
what I will do in chapter 10, the next chapter, um, I haven't spoken at all about the marketing side, um, the artwork, the materials, which is actually quite an interesting part of the story as well. So uh, that's it, and I'll, I'll see you in chapter 10. Bye for now.